Hi, it's Stuart here from Doris Visits. Normally a cruise channel, but listen, we all have to leave home. And when we do, we want the alarm to work. So this is about a standard alarm control panel that I can help you fix to save you some money. Because it would cost you 80 bucks to call somebody out and about 40 pounds to buy a new one, if you're lucky. I've seen them on eBay for 40 pounds, which means it's probably 60 to you. Now, if it does go wrong, you can use the one on the alarm panel to switch on and off. You perhaps want to work with the electric off and the battery disconnected, but it's only 12 volts, so I'm working with it on. I don't advise you to do that. Switch it off. Depending on the design, there's normally a couple of lugs that you need to just pull away, release, and then gently flip out the PCB board. When you do, if the anti-tamper is connected, the alarm will go off. Just punch in your number and reset at the main control. But if that's your only control, you'll have to work with the alarm on. While you're working, don't touch the little spring at the back. That's the alarm. Once you've turned it off, every time you flick that spring, the anti-tamper will set the alarm off again. But the idea of an alarm pad that the two sections of copper wire on this plastic board are not connected. When the button gets pressed in, it joins them together. But if they're covered in dirt, if they're filthy, the connection doesn't work. So all we're gonna do is clean the copper wire and make the connections shiny again. Now I'm using some sandpaper. You can use some emery paper, something fine, or a nail file. I put a screwdriver inside to give me something solid. I'm just gonna rub it very gently. As this is a coarse sandpaper, I'm gonna be very careful not to lift the copper off the board. That would just destroy it. So I'm gonna get most of the dirt off all of the contacts, every single one of them, even the numbers I might not use. And then I'm gonna take some nail polish remover or some spirit and a cotton bud, and I'm gonna clear all of the rest of the dirt and the dust away so the back of the board is nice and clean. Don't touch any of the other components, just clean your contacts in that little circular movement and then clean them with nail polish remover. Don't touch the little spring at the back. Remember, that's the tamper. If you touch that, the alarm will go off. You'll have to switch it off again. So we finish cleaning, just a little bit of liquid, then a dry cotton bud. And then I'm just gonna give a wipe to the back of the buttons. Now gently fix it back together again, lining up the holes where the lugs go. Pressing it in firmly, very firmly. Make sure that it's in both sides, locked in. Then you can test your buttons. And surprise, surprise, they all work. We have a working button again and a working keypad. Now, all I've got to do is clean the keypad up, which I can do with the nail varnish remover and make it all look sparkling white again. So, this is Stuart from Doris Visits, and I write crime fiction. Try one of the books, Cruise Ship Heist. And if you like to listen to the audiobook, you can listen to it free in sections here on this channel. Cruise Ship Heist by Stuart St. Paul. And when we're cruising, we make cruise port guides of all the ports. Here's the one from Troy. Thanks for watching. We've arrived at Troy. It's about five minutes away from the museum in the coach.
The important positioning of the land of Troy meant that it was occupied for over 3,000 years. So there was Troy 1, Troy 2, right up to Troy 9, and they're all standing on top of each other. No one knows what they were actually called, but archaeologists have labelled them that. Kybet's killing heat here in, you know, real hot summer. Thank you.